get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Live from the Sweet and Snack Show Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. We're live at the Sweet and Snack Show, and I was lucky enough to get Justin, the Justin. Um, and Justin, talk about, for people who don't know, I mean, I've seen you everywhere. I eat your product. I go to Trader Joe's and, and pick it up whenever I'm there. It's always right at the checkout aisle, so I have to grab one. Tell people, for people who don't know, what you guys, what kind of products you have. Yeah, we are a, we're a nut butter company that specializes in jars, squeeze packs, chocolate nut butter cups, and we just launched at this show a almond butter and cashew butter covered nut. So we have a cashew butter cashew right and an almond nut, butter nut butter covered, covered almond. Yeah. nuts. So they're vegan, 100% organic. It's a really fun, snackable item. Talk about back when. You guys, 15 years ago, you started the company, right? What was it like 15 years ago, first starting? <laughs> what gave you the idea? So. Okay, so I started the company almost 18 years ago, right? But that's the idea, yes. right? And, that, and the idea is, is honestly like making nut butters in your house with a food processor, living with a bunch of roommates, waiting tables, working at REI, bringing home dry nuts, adding bananas, cinnamon, coconut, cashews, blueberries, and making all these concoctions and putting them in jars all over the cupboard and your roommates eating them all and literally writing Justin's on every jar, Justin's, 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 Justin's. And then eventually, like... You mean so for your territory? Oh, yeah. So they wouldn't eat it? Not eat. Gotcha. Yeah, this is my stuff. I'm, and I'm keeping a little journal and having fun and maybe I have too much free time. And then, um, and then someone's like, wow, these are, really, these are really awesome. You ever thought turning this into a business? And I had just graduated a, few, a year before with a degree in environmental policy. I wanted to be a lawyer. And I interned at a law firm and it just wasn't what I wanted to be doing. And it was great. I would experience. not have pegged that. Yeah. I pegged this for you. <laughs> Lawyer. It's funny how things end up. Yeah. And so I, um, I started to write a business plan, and I went to CU's business school's library and just researched because I really thought that's what I needed to do. And I was really blown away by just how entrepreneurial Boulder, Colorado is. Have you been to Boulder? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it's, a, it's a scene, a startup scene for tech companies, outdoor companies, food companies, um, health and wellness companies. Um, a clean tech, it's just this phenomenal location for inspiration, right? And so I, I met a lot of natural food entrepreneurs from Celestial Seasonings to White Wave and Silk to Horizon Organic Dairy to Wild Oats at the time. They're and all in Boulder. They're all in Boulder. I didn't know that. You know, and then I just really learned you know, how to, to, to grow and scale a natural food company successfully. And to answer your question, it took me about three years to get it going. My first invoice was 15 years ago. And my first invoice was to a Great Harvest Bread Company, and my second invoice was to a co-op. And, and basically, 15 years ago, I was you know, waiting tables. On nights and weekends, I was making nut butter at a salsa company's facility in Denver, about an hour away, because on nights and weekends, they weren't using their facility, so I negotiated a really cheap rent. Right. And Very I'm making smart. nut butters, and I'm putting it in my truck, and then I wake up the next morning, and I literally deliver it to stores and I'd check it in the back door and I'd stock my own shelves and then I'd stick around and maybe sample it or do a demo and then I'd go to work and it was just like non-stop. And I did that for about three years yeah. until I had enough volume to bring have my own kitchen in Boulder and share it with another company, another food company called Bobo's Oat Bars. Mm. And she's doing really well. I've heard of that, yeah. 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 So, Tell me from that point, 15 years ago, I mean, you're hustling, you're probably, you know, just trying to get the word out there. What were some of the milestones along the way from that, those first invoices um, up until now? What, what do you think back on and some of the turning points? There are so many, right? And I'd, I'd say as an entrepreneur, your first milestone, honestly, is your first coworker or employee, yeah. right? It's that first person who believes in you. It's that first person who validates your craziness by saying, I want to be a part of this. That was a huge milestone. Right. The second milestone was getting my first investor. 
someone who says, I believe in you so much, here's some money, mm. right? Let's go see it. That was huge. And then, you know, getting in your first store was huge validation. Like, oh my God, someone really wants to buy this now? You know, and then that was a huge, and then, and then really the biggest turning moment for this organization was about four years in, almost five years in, I just have jars and we're, um, the, the company's doing okay. It's struggling to be honest with you because the jars just didn't have enough volume or enough margin to really make it it's successful. It's expensive to pursue. This is like high quality stuff. And you're making it practically by hand at small scale. And you can't charge $30 a jar because you still have kind of this, you know, um, uh, level, you know, price level you can really only compete at. And so I was on a mountain bike ride and I was eating in a little energy gel or a goo or a cliff shot or power gel and and I'm eating it and it was an awesome product and I'm thinking to myself while sitting you know on a rock like mm. why isn't anyone putting protein like a nut butter into a squeeze pack because that's really what I want and that was honestly the big aha moment and no one was really doing that nobody I, I and that's why it was so tricky because I said to myself well geez it's such a simple idea right. clearly like someone's tried it and it, and it doesn't work it can't be done or else it would have been done, you know? And so I found, you know, like three co-packers and they made squeeze packs for everything. Ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, salad dressing, honey, um, lotion, hair gel, all of it, right? And I told them what I was working on and they all turned me down because of cross-contamination of nuts. Mm. No one wanted a peanut or almond in their facility. So then I, I, you know, asked them to throw me a bone, you know, what kind of equipment do you use? How much does it cost? Where can I find one? And they, they all kind of helped me out a little bit. I found a, a company out of New Jersey that sold me a, um, you know, an old reconditioned piece of equipment that I helped refurbish and raised or borrowed $75,000 from my roommate's parents to buy this machine. It took me about a year and we launched, literally almost invented, wow. you know, the peanut butter, almond butter squeeze pack. And as silly as it sounds, we kind of like created it. Yeah. And uh, launched it in the market, and that really was a big pivot, which changed changed everything for us because it created something innovative. It pushed the category into a new direction, and in all fairness, it gave a consumer a trial size for a you know an almond butter, a cashew butter, a chocolate hazelnut butter before they make that you know twelve dollar, ten dollar um, investment. Right. At what point do you decide? Because what I know, Justin's, I went the opposite. I got the peanut butter cups. Ah. And then went the reverse and got yeah, yeah, yeah. the peanut butter and the squeeze pack. So at what point did the, the peanut butter cups come alive? So then uh, we have the jars and the packs and a few years go by and they're, they're doing really well. And um, this is what would drive you know, professional business you know, managers crazy is because the entrepreneur just wants to keep creating, right? right? And, um, and I'm in, I'm in uh, a lot of natural food stores doing demos, eating at the salad bar. And I'd, at the end of the salad, I'd be like, all right, I need something sweet. You know, I have a sweet tooth. And I'd walk down the aisle, and it's only chocolate bars. And I'm like, why can't, why aren't there any peanut butter cups here? You know, you go in any conventional grocery food store, and they have a whole peanut butter cup section practically. But in a natural food store, I couldn't find one. And I'm like, can you not make a peanut butter cup organic? I mean, like, what's going on here? So I was like, They're challenge, like, challenge uh, accepted. Healthy, right? You know, let's figure this out. So I literally spent a few months and I bought some chocolate molds and I would double boil chocolate and I'd paint them on the molds and you know, and I'd make my own peanut butter filling and I'd put them in the molds and put them in the fridge and pull them out and pop them out and, and they tasted delicious. And it took me a, almost a year to find the right manufacturer who would work with small production quantities with organic ingredients and get the organic certification and be willing to take a risk with me. So I found a small chocolatier a ma and pa, you know, operator, and we brought this peanut butter cup to market, 100% organic, conflict-free, way less sugar than what's already out there, so that way it could be defensible, right? The world doesn't need more candy, it needs better candy. Right. So how do you make it defensible? Well, you make it the best. And we launched it, and I thought it'd be this great little natural, you know, niche product, and it's done really well. Really well. It's blown my mind. Yeah. It's been a dream come true. So, Justin, two things. I always like to hear, you know, starting a company, running a company is not easy, right? Anyone here, it's like there's a lot of things you need to go through. What's been a big challenge? And then on the flip side, what's been a really proud moment for you? Yeah. What's been a challenge uh, throughout the, the life of the company? Yeah, I'd say um, 
the biggest challenge for this company, you know, I'd say is just always doing the right thing. Mm. You know, and at the end of the day, we're all businesses. We're all here to make money, right? And but the right thing to do is to continue to make your products better by renovating them and converting things to organic or more sustainable sources to you know creating the right benefits for your coworkers to you know just supporting the right nonprofits giving away you know the money to support the things that you think are going to make this world a better place and so i think that it's always a challenge to make sure we continually look in the mirror yeah. to make sure that we're being better and not complacent with what we have totally. and so we're really good right now at making sure that we continue to do the right thing and not just rest on our laurels it's completely just continue to renovate and push the brand to be better. And I think it's hard. I think companies kind of fall into this trap of, you know, mediocrity. Yeah, I mean, there's a pull there, right? Um, what about proud moment? Looking back, I'm sure there's a lot of proud moments. What sticks out to you? Yeah, you know, I think the proudest moment I have today is I have a five and a six year old mm. And it's going to the grocery food store and them running up to the shelf and pointing daddy, daddy, and then they, they then they, they know what to do and you know we basically forward face everything and make the labels look <laughs> look nice and tight <laughs> to get them working. <laughs> Put them to work. That's exactly right. I love it. Justin, where should people find you? Where should they uh, go buy you in retail and where should they go online? Yeah, we're available at, at almost everyone's favorite grocery food store. Um, we sell really well and we have a great distribution at you name it whole foods sprouts natural grocers target wegmans kroger walmart you know your favorite grocery store we're probably in it we're not in joe's yet i'm working on it and then you can find us online at justins.com justins.com thank you what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes walk through the fire came out better on the other side See, life's like a beach if you find the sand And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand